Hello, Martin here with more, I don't know, minutes, 20, whatever it is, minutes of unadulterated drivel, thinly disguised as my property clinic, when you can send in your questions and I answer them because I know stuff or so somewhere. Uh, yeah, 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 you know, so you've got to like this, otherwise I'll stop doing them, okay? I mean, it's as simple as that. I'm like a lovey, you know, I need people to say, we like you, we like you, otherwise you go, I can't be bothered, I'm live as a hermit on a Scottish island. So you need to like it, all right? Like it, like it, like it, or you won't get any more. Okay, it's as simple as that. Ooh, petulant at the start of a property clinic. Who would have thought, eh? Oof. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, like it, subscribe. Uh, subscribe's different. I mean, oh, you know, that's more of a commitment, okay? If you subscribe, well, you know, you're saying, well, I really like it and I want more of this, as opposed to just liking it. It's a passing kind of thing. It's just like a hi. It's like the difference in between just like passing somebody in the street and saying morning, which is a like, which is sort of a vague like, and, and, um, and more of a sort of like pen friend. Remember pen friends? You remember pen friends? Do you remember at school, when I was, when I was at school, they had this thing where you filled in this little form and you've got like a pen friend somewhere in the world. Like it was normally Europe, it was France or Germany or Spain. And and then somehow, like you fill in this form, you sent it off. And then this thing was just primary school, was it primary school, second school? I don't know. And then for some random reason, at some point later, you got this name and address. And then you wrote to this person and say, hi. <laughs> and I don't know how the heck it worked. I mean, I really don't, I still to this day, I don't even know if they'd allow it this day and age. Right, anyway, whatever. But I had got this pen friend in Germany and he's called Stefan Bick. And I'm still trying to track him down because I had the most amazing time. So, so, so anyway, so he we wrote to each other a few times. Then he's, this is amazing. What's this got to do with anything? I don't know. Just, just bear with me. Bear with me. The fun, some of the interesting stuff later. This might be triggering off something, okay, in your brain. Remember, you remember, remember your pen friend. So anyway, so, uh, oh yeah, so he wrote to me. So why don't you come out to Germany? So I said, oh, okay, then. I was like 14. And then, so my mum and dad actually phoned up his mum and dad and said, do you know anything about this? And they went, no. But anyway, we'll look after him. Well, they didn't say no. They said nine, because it was Germany. Um, nine or nicht or whatever it is. And anyway, so to go long story short, uh, I ended up going out to Germany. And um, yeah, amongst other things, I fell in love. But that's a different story. That, that's a different, complete different story. Remind me to tell you the story about Gabby and how I ended up learning to ballroom dance. Yeah, it's a long story. I'm not going to do it now. No, 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 no. Remind me next time, next time, next time. Yeah, wow. Anyway, how on earth we going to that? Oh, I remember, yes, liking. Liking this video. Liking it is no big commitment, okay? Subscribing is a little bit more. It's a bit like a pen friend. But I promise if you come to visit, I'll know you're coming to visit, all right? I do that kind of thing. Anyway, hello, Brian. Brian Spasm, that's an interesting name. Martin, see, let's start on a really high. Is it acceptable in an emergency to substitute onions for leeks in onion gravy? Well, there you go, Brian. Hey, right up there with the deep and important stuff to start off with. Sets the tone. Thanks for that. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, if you had a question like Brian's or something similar, you could actually write something vaguely to do with property. It's supposed to be property clinic. If you want to do this, right, okay, so we use hashtag Ask Martin Monday, all right, which means on a Monday on Twitter, uh, at TV Martin Roberts, that's my Twitter, you can send any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Yeah, so that's what Brian did, and he came up with this, and then Chris and Chris were like onions and leeking, whatever. It, you know what? Was they squished up? The leeks? Have you cooked them? Can you really tell the difference? The only problem with leeks is they're a little bit fibrous, aren't they? And the, you know, the, the leaky kind of stuff is not quite, I mean, onions just sort of go squish and disappear. Like the leek sort of, it's a bit more sort of stay aroundy, you know, it's still it's like bits in your teeth when you do it. So I would say, yeah, in an emergency. This is Lorraine from the London area. Oh, right. Lorraine or the London area. That sounds like something you'd have on a radio show, isn't it? I was speaking to Lorraine from the London area. Hi, Martin. Do you know if you've been to any manor houses on the show and sell them? Have any houses you've done on the show been haunted? And have you been to an auction where they say this house is haunted? Well, for a start, let's go backwards. I don't think they would actually say that as an auction. They wouldn't say this house is haunted because it's not necessarily something you have to declare on the legal pack. Uh, or on that thing you have to fill in if you're the seller. Or there might be a general box which says anything else you need to tell the seller, uh, buyer. Hmm. Have we done any houses that have been on? Yes, been over that a few times. Not many in the whole scheme of things, really. And manor houses. Well, yeah, we would do a manor house. We have had a few very smart houses. Uh, I seem to remember a half-timbered thing in somewhere in the West Midlands. That doesn't narrow it down that much, does it? It's a big place, a place of, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, half-timbered thing. And it was, uh, it was good. Oh, my. 
gosh, what a terrible punchline to a story. It was good. Jamelia Jackson, have you ever done a church? Oh my gosh, we've done loads of churches. It's always quite sad when a church comes up at auction because you realise it's it's failed in its principal uh, reason for being, which is a place of worship. But it happens and they do make the most extraordinary opportunities. They can be very big. They can offer all sorts of uh, potential. But they do come with lots of caveats and they're not probably one for the foolhardy or a person who isn't willing to really roll their sleeves up. Lots of restrictions, some listed building issues. You've got issues if there's a graveyard, there's all sorts of things you need to do about that. At. But, you know, they can often get into a real derelict state. So to see them done up nicely in the community, because they're often in the heart of the community, can actually be quite a nice thing. And certainly, you know, I've seen some amazing conversions all over the place. They can be converted quite effectively into flats um, or just stunning houses. I think most people, well, wouldn't you love to take them out of church? And I think, oh, and they've got an amazing staircase and keep the organ and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, churches are amazing. Not really a question, more of a statement. You can do that if you want. You don't have to just ask me to say something you could just use me as a conduit to say your thoughts that's what exactly what bernard lounge carpet has done nice name bernard if ghosts can walk through walls how come they don't fall through floors well the thing is i think they choose to walk through the walls and i think if they want to do they could choose to go through the floors i don't think they're reliant on the floor being there to float above it um i think they just choose it would get a bit confusing if they just went up and down it's more effective if they come through the walls that's uh, a little bit more spooky in that kind of like hollywood what ghosts would do kind of way so there we go it's a good question Fletch. Why do you film estate agents giving their valuations at such strange canted angles? It's been bothering you for years. Fletch, I'm so sorry it's been bothering you for years. If that's the only thing that's been bothering you for years, then I'm delighted because that's really something which is highly insignificant in the whole scheme of things. But uh, if it's on top of many things that are bothering you, then I'm sorry if we added to your woes. It's a style thing. You know, when we start the show, you have to do things which separate it out, both content-wise and visually, from all the stuff that's out there. They call me, they call it a format point in TV land. So that is one of the things that Joel G. Angles, it's just it's just the way I did it. So yeah, you get the idea. You can always turn your TV on its side if you get, if it, if it, if it um, cheeses you off flesh. Uh, Mandrake Fraser asks, have you had a go on one of Dion's dubs? Hey, Dion's dubs are, are amazing. Dion's dubs. Dion, if you don't know, as well as being a footballer, also invented a thing called a Dion dub and it's like a musical instrument. It's like a drum thing. It's uh, pretty cool. And I think he had Stevie Wonder, he told me Stevie Wonder's drummer had, uh, and actually got one. So I was like, wow, oh, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Am I musical? Well, I play the piano and I play the guitar. Yeah, so I guess I'm, yeah, I am musical. My mum was very musical and she sort of passed it on to me and I'm trying to pass it on to my kids. I don't know if you can inherit music ability. It's all about practice, isn't it? It's like, ugh, practice is, uh, is what makes perfect when it comes to me or anything, but particularly music. Okay, I love this question. Uh, this is one, two, three, Tracy Lou. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. It's my birthday today. Well, obviously it's not now, but it was then. And I couldn't predict that I'd be in lockdown and asking Martin Roberts a question. Well, there you go. Life has thrown some interesting curveballs at you, right? So, here's a question. I live in Wales and my big garden backs onto a mountain. Oh my gosh, there are some amazing mountains and some gardens that back onto a mountain in Wales. Wow. But the woodpeckers have pecked holes in my wooden fence posts. Any tips? Wow. Well, I mean, wow, I, I think that's really cool that you got woodpeckers pecking holes in your wooden fence posts. I mean, I imagine it's a bit annoying because the noise... 24 hours a day, or I don't know, I've got a headache. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, tips, film it, stick it on YouTube. I mean, people would love it, right? I'm surprised because the wood, like fence posts are generally full of chemicals and stuff. They're going to be ooh, spaced out woodpeckers. Ooh. Amazing. Ryan. Hello, Ryan. How's my lockdown treating you? Well, you know what? It's been interesting, hasn't it? It's like you want to look back and think, well, I achieved something during that time. Well, I have. I've achieved setting up my YouTube channel. And I wouldn't be talking to you now. I would probably were it not for lockdown. So that's quite good. What else have I done? Well, there's more time with the family, which is always good. Worked very hard on my charity. So I've got um, my charity, which is the Martin Roberts Foundation. And we've been doing all sorts of fantastic things. And I'm so proud because we've literally just released a video version of, of my book, Sadsville, being read by Basil Brush. I mean, what a thing that was, it's like, wow, Basil Brush, I grew up with Basil Brush, he's now reading my book, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So the plan is that we released it on YouTube and on the martinrobertsfoundation.org.uk website, you can go and see it and go and show your kids, kids enjoy it, and it's got a bit of a, a deeper message as well, it's about child well-being and mental mental well-being and, and getting kids, maybe who've been through lockdown and struggled a bit, just to seek out for some support and help if they need it. So there's a, there's a bit of a message, message, message there, it's in support of the NSPC. In Childline, and we're hoping to give it out 
well, we, we will we'll give it out free to every single school in the UK along with a self-study pack, a home study pack. So that's all available on martinrobertsfoundation.org.uk. So if you've got any school friends who are school teachers or whatever, tell them about it. Yeah, and hopefully it's a resource that might help. And we're working very hard to try and get that publicised. So anything you can do to help, please do. And you can find out more at uh, martinrobertsfoundation.org.uk. And I'm very, very proud of that one. Thank you for asking, Ryan. Okay, Anne Mitchell. Hi, Anne. We have a house to sell in Scotland. Should we wait a while or put it on the market soon? Well, I think houses in Scotland, aren't they going to be, well, not all of Scotland probably, but the ones that have sort of got a bit more space about them and a bit more sort of countryfied, I think they're going to be huge in demand, right? So if you've got a nice house in Scotland, you know, whatever. But, you know, I mean, just putting it on the market, I mean, we've got to lose, right? I mean, somebody offers you, makes you a stupid offer, you don't sell it to them. I don't know what the market is going to do. I, we wait with bases breath. I think there's a the demand is going to be there. If the economy generally tanks, then probably it's going to affect things. But, you know, people still need houses and there's definitely a pent of demand and there's been lots of reports of huge amounts of activity. So um, I stick it on and see what happens. Uh, Stokey108 asks, what renovation jobs add most value to a home? Well, without doubt, you've got to get the structure okay because that will really put somebody off so you know i mean you nearly really need to start making sure the shell is waterproof and watertight and just looks okay but then in general the two things that always add most value to a house are doing up the kitchen and doing up the bathroom unless you go completely bonkers you and put it in the most ridiculously ott gold-plated bathroom and and some handcrafted you know walnut and exotic materials a kitchen you, you'll generally get back what you what you put in uh, when it comes to kitchens and bathrooms and not only adds value but makes them much more saleable people are going to go walk in straight they'll, they'll forgive a nap bedroom probably they'll you know the garden it'd be nice to have a nice garden but but if it's got a lovely kitchen and a lovely bathroom you can't go far wrong all right sarah denton hello why don't homes under the hammer show floor plans of the old and new layouts it would sometimes make it easier to understand and i love a floor plan who doesn't it's generally the first thing i look at when house hunting well floor plans are great i guess it's just we don't oh, we haven't got time to draw out the floor plans of all the properties we visit so if there is a floor plan already written out we show it but you know we haven't got time to go okay well let's just sketch this out it just because it comes down to that so we try i try and do my piece to camera where i sort of guide you through in a logical kind of way so you get a feeling for it but other than that i don't know you know what more we can do but i'll mention it sarah have you ever undertaken your own renovation project oh my gosh these hands are are, are cut they're bruised they're they're in the right all state i'm always doing renovation projects i love it i've got two house renovations on the go at the moment uh well they've been slightly curtailed by everything that's gone on with the lockdown and all that kind of stuff but they're actually available to watch here on this YouTube channel. So House Renovations is, Practical House Renovations is a playlist. I've put up one part or two parts of the first house renovation. And there's a whole other house renovation, which we've started, which when we get going again, I will put some more up of that. So you can follow two very practical house renovations. And that's really fun. I love doing it. It's a great, if you haven't done it before, it's a great sense of satisfaction you get from doing up a house. And then if you make a bit of money out of it as well, then fantastic. Renato Rossi. I have just completed my second renovation i was wondering are there people out there you can ask pay to find you properties to invest in as i'm busy so busy refurbishing my third property yes there are property finders out there people who do it for a living they search and trawl through and find things but you know what i would say find the time to do it yourself i mean it's a really important part of the whole process uh, a property finder is going to charge you but i mean okay so they they do the hard work and they save you time which you can be doing other things but uh, you know what there's quite like doing your own research so i would spend a bit of time doing that and then you can be your own property finder. Susie McJones. Integrated fridge freezer, washing machine and dishwasher. All some or none for a rental property. Well, I don't see the disadvantage of integrated units and they are rather smart. So I would probably say all of them, actually. Thing. I mean, you know, so I've just bought a couple of kitchens for the projects I'm working on at the moment and they come with appliances, right? And I mean, the pl they built in appliances, they don't seem that expensive. I mean, I'm, I presume that there's more choice for non built in units i mean white goods in a, in a kitchen okay it's always nice if you can disguise them the fridge is hidden away behind a cupboard unit or you know the dishwasher is hidden away so you can't see it it is i would say yeah unless it's costing you an arm and a leg i would go for it even if it's a rental property right rental properties you know i don't think they should be they, they need to be fit for purpose but i don't think they should be substandard so i think you need to do the best you can to make them as nice as possible maddie foster martin when you've opened your sources initially, are you a follow the guidance kind of guy and refrigerate 
or do you pop them back in a cool, dry place? <laughs> if you could see my fridge, Matthew. It is full of packets. <laughs> Half-used packets of sauces. So, yes, I may half-use them, stick them back in the fridge, forget about them, discover them two years later covered in mould kind of guy. Save our sleep house. The final question is not a question, it's a statement. It's mum, 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 Martin. Thank you very much. If you haven't seen Atletico Mince and the Mickey Take of Me, it's a very lovely thing. Check it out. It's fantastic. Have you enjoyed this? I, you know what? There wasn't a ramble. There was a ramble. There was a ramble near the start. Oh, here's just a ramble, just in case you're disappointed to finish off with. One of the things about Lockdown is the TV series that you get to discover on like Netflix, YouTube and Disney Plus and wherever else you want to look, BritBox or whatever, and uh, BBC, um, iPlayer and all that kind of stuff. And I've discovered a few things, uh, both of which I guess are a bit of a confession. And the first one, which is a bit of where were you, is Friday Night Dinner. Have you seen that? It's just, I'm watching it. It's just, it, I'm not sure if it's, a, I'm not sure if it, I, I don't know if it appeals to everybody. It probably doesn't. I think you need a fairly shiny sense of humour, but I really like it. <laughs> a nice bit of squirrel. Um, and then, this is a confession. And this is a confession to finish off with. I have been watching Glee with my daughter, who's 10. Glee. Did you see Glee when it first came out? I don't know where I was. I missed it. Flew wouldn't be on my radar. Oh my gosh. If you want a bit of total escapism, watch Glee. Awesome. <laughs> but right now, <laughs> last night, I discovered that you can now get Faulty Towers on Netflix. <laughs> so I'm now off to go and watch <laughs> Basil, a bit of Faulty Towers. And I, I watched the first episode, of the, the one with the builders. But the first one was A Touch of Class, that's right, where the posh bloke, who turned out to be con man. But I'm, the second one, got halfway through, I had to stop because I thought I was going to die. I was laughing so much, it was the builders, ironically, and how uh, O'Reilly the builder and his team put the, put the wall in the wrong place. I was absolutely, there's one bit where Basil just absolutely loses it. He has like a seizure. It's just so classic. So anyway, so that's what I'm going to go do now. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Martin tell us that we're really not as well I'm sorry but the rest of it was all right listen make sure you come back another time i'll have more of this stuff uh make sure you like this video remember it's not a commitment for life it's just a like <laughs> make sure you subscribe that's a bit more of a commitment tell your friends uh don't forget ask martin monday hashtag ask martin monday and that's on twitter at, at tv martin roberts and i will see you again very soon Mwah.